So in this next video in this uh, series about what makes a cartridge good, I'm going to talk about styli. Finally, we are at the styli, the small piece of diamond getting into the groove, digging out the musical signal. Until now, we have covered all the other parts, housing, magnetic system, suspension, armature, cantilever, <clears throat> and now we're all the way down to the stylus that goes into the groove. Um, <clears throat> at Autophone, we use a lot of different styli. I have models of some of them here, and this is what I'm going to discuss in a while. But in general, there are a few considerations when talking about styli and, and some wordings that might make sense for, for you to, to, to hear about. So two of these styli, these two, they look different from the other ones. That is what we called tipped or bonded styli. And uh, the reason for that naming is that it's only the very tip. You see there's a small line here and also here a small line. So it's only the tip which is made out of diamond. The rest is made out of titanium. So we only use a very tiny piece of diamond to make this kind of styli. These styli are the ones that we use mainly in our 2M products, OM products, Concorde products. The other type of styli, I have five pieces here as example. That is what you would call naked or nude diamonds. There are also other words, but this means that the whole diamond, the whole piece like this, is made out of diamond. So not only the tip, as we had over here, but it's the whole piece. So it's naked, it's without any supporting structure here. Th that is one big difference between these styli. And of course, the more diamond you're going to use, and also as we will see, the more complicated the shape will get, of course, the more precious they will get because it's going to be really complicated to make some of these diamonds. What do we need this stylus for? Of course, to go into the groove and dig out the musical signal. Um, I want to show you a few things here. This small plate is just a 3D printed model. This is sort of a cutout of a special record. I just made up what kind of signals I want here. In real life, this piece is only 0.5 times 0.5 millimeters. So a lot smaller than the tip of a matchstick, for example. So 0.5 times 0.5 millimeter, extremely small in real life. So this has been magnified 200 times. And this also goes for the styli I have over here. They have been magnified 200 times. So and, and these are now the grooves, different grooves, and these are sort of this structure, this shape is what we want these styli to follow along. I just take a random one. So what I mean is that when this one is down here, we want that to be able to follow the structure down here. Whatever it's like this or it's like this, we want it to be able to follow that because this structure is the music. This is the record. So that is the purpose of the stylus, to go in and dig out as much information as possible from the record. If we look a little bit closer, just a little bit closer, then this is again a groove, just a cross section of the groove. Imagine just cutting this one, then we have this one. And this is then a tip of a stylus, just a, a random one. And imagine that what we want to do is to get this one down here. So this styler, this tip must go down in this groove and then stay down there and follow whatever will go on, whatever wrinkles of This is the purpose of the styler. So it's really down to a very delicate job that this stylus has to do. Let's start to look at the different shapes. Um, we start with the most simple one, this one. 
This is what we call just a spherical stylus. And this means that the very tip out here is shaped like a ball, like a sphere. So this is just a ball shape that you have out here. And now we want this ball shape to go down into the groove like this. And now imagine that, that these are sort of the correct dimensions. And this one by itself is extremely small. If I had it on the table, even if I had a bunch of these on the table, it would look like dust for you because they are really, really small, really small. So we want that one to go in here. And then I talked about cantilevers a while ago. That cantilever is of course connecting to the stylus. And then somewhere up there, we have a magnet or we have an, an armature. And that somewhere is around one meter away. This is the size we have from here, then one meter. Then we are up at the magnet or the armature in the cartridge. So we are really talking about very tiny grooves, very small, delicate information that we want to transform from here to the cantilever, armature or magnet and out into our system so that we can listen to music. If we look here, then of course this looks nice, no problem. This basically also look nice that we can trace this one. But if I go in this one, then maybe we are getting at the limit where this kind of shape really can do the job the best possible way. Of course, it's important with the stylus that it's also placed correctly in the groove. If you look in this direction, we do not want it to have like this or like this. We want it to be vertical. If you look from the side, that's then a different thing because from the side, basically we also want it to be vertical, but not totally, but I'll, I'll come back to that. But as a starting point, we can talk about that we want it vertical when we look from the front. And if we look from the side, also vertical. So, so that is the job of the cantilever and the rest of the cartridge to make sure that this stylus is placed correctly in the groove to get out the musical signal. I put two dots on this model. These two black dots, that is in fact where the stylus is touching the groove. So these two very tiny spots. And of course it's not easy to see, but if you look closer at them, they are in fact also round, shaped like a disc. So the contact surface between the stylus and the groove, the record, is sort of also disc shaped, round. Now we then need to think a little bit about how this is cut, because this is cut by a very sharp stylus, cutting sapphire, cutting stylus. And now I'm getting into this groove and trying to get out all the signal that has been cut with a very sharp structure with something which is now having a round contact surface to this groove. And it's obvious that that cannot do the job 100% as we want it to. It does a really good job, really good job getting most of the information out. It's easy to use because this kind of spherical diamond, it's not that critical if it's placed a little bit like this or this or a little bit the other directions. It will still work. So this is very easy to use and very easy to get to the point where you can listen to music. This is historically also the first shape that was developed for styli to play phonograph records as they were called back many, many years ago. The next shape I will look into is this one. Then the next one has a name like elliptical. This is also a tipped diamond, bonded. Only this one, the very tip over here, up here is, is, is diamond. And the shape is a little bit different. So if you just look from the side, like this, looking in here, then they look a lot the same. If I 
twist it like this, and we now look like this, then it's obvious that something has happened over here. So the thing that has happened is that you have flattened this side and the opposite side a little bit, and you have done that to make it more narrow in this direction, because as I said, these grooves are cut by an extremely sharp needle. And that was the thing that made it a little bit difficult for this spherical shape to go into all the small wrinkles. Um, now we try to get a little bit closer to something sharp by doing this flattening. And it's called elliptical, but if you would ask a mathematician about this shape, if you would look at it, it's not an elliptical shape, but, but this is what it's called. Uh, it's been called this for ages, so this is also what we call it. And that was in fact also the second shape that was developed back many, many years ago. So it's a little bit slimmer, so if we go down and try to get it into the groove, then due to its more slim nature, it will be easier for this stylus to get all the small details out. It is still not really sharp, but it's sharper than this one. And if we have a look, and again, it's not easy for you to see, but if we look at where we are touching the groove, again, we have these black dots, then they are not just now round, they are a little bit elongated now, also a little bit elliptical in shape if you look at it. So it's getting a little bit narrower, the contact surface, and a little bit higher. So it's a small change, but definitely hearable and worthwhile. So elliptical shaped diamond, tip diamond, is a very nice diamond to use. And also still, it's very easy to adjust and also very easy to get to the point where you can listen to music. And in fact, this is the type of diamond which we used in one of our most popular cartridge, the 2M Red over here. So this is the stylus in the 2M Red. Now that we're talking about the 2M Red, then we are using this stylus in the 2M Red. And then of course we have the 2M Blue, Bronze and Black. And for these, we use some of the other shapes here that I will get back to, but I will take one of them out straight away. This one, which is a nude or naked version of an elliptical stylus. The shape is very different than the other ones, but it's diamond, all of it. But if we go to the very tip out here, which is what goes into the groove, so this is the only really important part, then the shape is approximately the same as we have in this elliptical shaped bonded diamond. So we have again flattened a surface here and over here. Again with the purpose to make it a little bit slimmer in this direction. When it goes into the groove, we will have a contact surface which is not just a circular round, it will also be a little bit elongated, so you would have a surface area that will come closer to the surface area that the cutting needle had back when the record was cut. So this one is what we use in the 2M Blue. I mean, if we now keep our attention on the 2M series as an example, which makes sense, I can take the next one out here, which is a fine line elliptical diamond. So this fine line elliptical diamond is not just like this one with flattened surfaces to get it narrow. This one has been shaped all the way from the beginning into an elliptical shape. So, so this is more like you could imagine you take uh, something round like this and then you gently squeeze it until you get something which is sort of more elliptical shape, which this one is. So this is the next step up the ladder in 
the diamonds and also in the sound quality you can get out. So what happens, it's exactly the same thing than before. You get the contact surface to be more narrow, as you can see here and here. Again, I indicated with some black dots. And more narrow means that when we go down into the groove, it will be able, again, to read more information, more details will come out of the groove. When you use this one, a fine line, elliptical diamond, compared to the elliptical shape. We are sort of approaching the, the shape of, of the cutting needle in order to be able to read as much information as possible. But now before I go to the next shape, it's, it's worthwhile thinking about what would happen if I would take a cutting needle and then use that to play the record because then I would be as close as possible I could get to the shape. I would in fact have the same shape. But that needle would then destroy the record because that would be too sharp. So there is a limit. There is a limit that we can go to and if we go beyond that limit there will be damage to the record. So of course not use cutting needle to play the record, but let's see how close we can get. And, and, and this is one of these uh, quests when you're talking about styli. How close can I get to the point that we are really able to read all the same thing that the cutting needle was able to put into the group? Th this is what we're aiming at. Also already now, I would say that going up here, this is in the 2M Bronx, that makes it now more complicated to adjust the cartridge than if you would compare to a 2M RAT. Because now it's more sharp and if it's sharp, it really has to have the correct angles to fit into the groove walls. If it does not have the correct angle, then you would not get the full benefit out of the needles. And this goes for all the next ones I'm going to talk about as well, when we get sharper it will demand more adjustment in order to get the full benefit, full musical experience that you can get from those needles. Next one in line will be the Shibata. So this is very special diamond and the, the history about this one is that it was developed back well, that will be in the 70s when there was some different approaches to having four channel uh, vinyl records. That would require a stylus that were able to play, replay really high frequencies. And high frequencies on a record means getting really the grooves uh, stacked together, really narrow. So therefore, we are now getting to what we would call a line contact diamond. Line contact because the contact l between the stylus and the groove is approaching a line. And again, the cutting stylus surface or sort of interface between the cutting stylus and the groove that it's cutting, that is a line. So. Now when we're talking line contact, we are getting closer to this point. So Shibata diamond, that's the name of it. It's uh, shaped very special, a little bit asymmetrically. But the important thing is that when we go down and look at the contact surface, now this one has become even more narrow and longer. So we are approaching a line shape coming from something over here which was round, coming to something a little bit more elongated and here even more elongated with the fine line elliptical and now with this one even more elongated, even closer to line. So therefore line contact diamond. And this is what we use in the 2M black and also in the 2M black LVB. So, so we have a nice range of different styli and shapes in our 2M series. And we use these diamonds in a lot of our other cartridges as well. It was just easy now to use the 2M series as an example. 
where we could go red, blue, bronze, black, and go from elliptical, nude elliptical, fine line elliptical, and then the Shibata shape. And of course, remember that these three, they are nude diamonds, and this is a tipped one. At this point, it might also be interesting to talk a little bit about uh, what kinds of diamonds are we using. And um, we are in fact using mainly artificial diamonds, or our suppliers of these styli are, are using mainly artificial diamonds. Um, and that is because artificial diamond, in the right quality of course, is slightly superior to natural diamonds. So if the diamond is made by a so-called CVD process, if it's single crystalline or monocrystalline, it will be the same as a type 2A diamond. People that have heard about diamonds before will know that type 2A diamonds are the most pure and the hardest diamond you can get. And the interesting thing is that if you are making these diamonds in the lab, artificially, then they would be perfect. No impurities, uh, they would be totally homogeneous and therefore uh, easy to cut and grind into phonograph styli. If you have natural diamond, there will always be some possibilities for crack and imperfections that you have to sort out when you are producing the diamonds. But of course, natural diamonds in the right quality will be equal good as those artificial type 2A diamonds made by the CVD process. <clears throat> and all our diamonds also, the, 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 the natural ones are of course certified diamonds. Now we can take this one, just as an example. Uh, I will take these ones away and just keep that one. Because the one I have here now is very closely related to this one. So this is also a fine line elliptical diamond. But it is a fine line elliptical diamond getting a little bit closer to a contact line diamond. So what's happened here is that has, it has become even more narrow so that the contact surface is now more, uh, is, is longer and more narrow. This is our FG2 or FG70 diamond that we have here. In principles, they are almost the same, but again, this one is slightly sharper. It's a fine line, fine line nude diamond, close to being line contact diamond. And now for the final one. Ta-da! And why do I say this? Because this is my favorite diamond at the moment. So this is Autophone Replicant. 100. That is the diamond that we're using for all our exclusive model cartridges. So that is the diamond that is also placed at the end of the diamond cantilever that we have in our MC Diamond and in the MC Verismo. So the Replicant 100. So what's so special about that? First of all the name, Replicant 100, because this is trying to replicate the shape of the cutting stylus which is what we have been aiming at all the way along, sort of to get close to the cutting stylus, but not too close so that we would destroy the record. So this is the closest we can get at the moment. And this is, of course, a line contact diamond. So the contact surface between record and styli is now really a long line with a certain width. Now when I'm talking about this contact surface, I now say it's, it's narrow, but I say it's long. Narrow is of course the important thing, because I want to get into the groove. But long is just as important, because I do not want to destroy the groove. So if it's narrow and long, then the area, the area of this contact surface 
will still be big. So if we compare this area of very narrow and long line contact diamond, even to that <coughs> of a spherical diamond, then those areas will be the same. And that means that the pressure that you put on the vinyl in the contact point will in fact be comparable. This one cannot destroy the record more easily than the spherical one. So th th this is one thing. So if this is adjusted the right way, correct tracking force and angles, I'll come back to the angles in a second, then this is very safe to use, even if it's really a narrow contact surface, but it's long, as I say. So the most of the styler I have over here will require this angle of 90 degrees. This then requires this angle of 23 degrees in order to have the line contact surface to be vertical to the record surface. So, Replicant 100. Let's try to wrap up what we have here. Of course, we have two categories of style line. These two in a category for themselves. This is the bonded style line. And then over here we have the naked or nude styli. So bonded or tipped styli is of course characterized by having only the very tip made out of diamond. The rest of these are made out of titanium. So significantly less amount of diamond, which also makes these kind of styli uh, more affordable to make. We use these styli then also in our more affordable cartridge. And then this one, as I already mentioned, the elliptical, bonded elliptical goes into the 2M red. So don't get this wrong. These are really reproducing music in a very, very nice way. If we compare what happens if we now go to the new uh, diamonds, I can make a direct comparison between this elliptical one and this elliptical one where the shape the very tip shape is approximately the same. And um, this goes into the 2M Blue. And definitely if you listen to 2M Red compared to 2M Blue, it's very obvious that there is a difference in sound. So this one will have more responsiveness, more clarity, more details. And this is because it's significantly smaller, lower mass, and then all of it is made out of diamond. So this is a better way of tracking the grooves and get more information out than this one. So that was elliptical, spherical, and now elliptical. And the next ones that we talked about was these two, two different kinds of uh, fine line elliptical. And these are now the ones where the contact surface become even more narrow and, and longer. And this also means that stepping from spherical elliptical now to fine line elliptical will make it more complicated to set up or more demanding, I would say. Not necessarily complicated, but demanding. You have to take care that we have the stylus in the groove with the right angles. Because if it's not, then you would really lose the, 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 the possible benefit you have by choosing this kind of stylus compared to the other one. So take more care to set up and then you will get full benefit and full musical experience out of this. And the same thing goes when I go a step further to these two, which are the line contact diamonds, the diamond, uh, the Shibata diamond and the Replicant 100 diamond. Here you have to take then even more care to set up. So in order to get the full benefit out of the Replicant 100, it really requires a perfect setup. But this is how it is. There's something that you need to do to get this almost, what I would say, perfect sound. Um, the good thing about all of these style line is also the different sounds, as I told you, that they deliver and the different tastes that people have. So even if I say that this gets the most uh, correct sound out of the groove, this might not be the thing that uh, people want to listen to. You might want to listen to a, a different kind of sound. And, and, and this is what we can deliver with our different cartridges using 
the different shapes. So therefore, this might not be the most popular one. It might be the fine line elliptical or the elliptical one. And this is really good because what we want to do is to make cartridges for everybody so everybody can sort of fulfill their taste and enjoy listening to music. And this is also the thought that we have when we start designing a cartridge because uh, in the design process of a new cartridge, it's important that we uh, sort of determine what kind of sound do we want this cartridge to have. And one important ingredient is what kind of stylus you would choose. Cantilever, as I also talked about, is extremely important. And this partnership, as I talked about when talking about cantilever, this partnership between cantilever and stylus is very important when we are talking about what sound we are going to get. But this is really important. In this series of videos about what makes a cartridge good, we have been covering the housing, the magnetic system, the rubber suspension systems, the, the armature and the coil wire and everything. And all of these things, all of them, do have significant influence on the sound. So even if it might seem most sexy to talk about diamonds and maybe even cantilevers, all of the components that go into the cartridge are very important for the sound that we get out at the end. So every part is part of this uh, design process where we are aiming at a certain sound. <clears throat> and now, for me, right now, these days, my perfect sound at home is with this Replicant 100 and on a diamond cantilever, because this is what has been revealing the most musical information and the best musical experience for me at home.